We're at Pier 9 in San Francisco checking out ModBots. They're building a platform where anyone can create an industrial quality robotic solution to fit their needs. If we can have one point of distinction amongst us versus all the other robotics technology companies at the moment, it's that we're inherently driving towards the modular nature of robotics. Oh, that's cool. So it's basically like I could go online and look through a whole variety of different apps for my mm -hmm. robot. Exactly. So this might mean you connect up a digital SLR camera to the end of a, a robot arm configuration of Modbot. What if I wanted to connect a drill? And wheels. You don't have to worry about how it works. You simply have to worry about what you want it to do. So what are the, the core pieces, the key components that you have to have to make this whole system work? So what we really want to inspire in people is the prospect of how fast they could build a robot with Modbot bits. But building it goes from the complication of assembling an encoder a motor, the bearings, the control electronics, the communications and power to doing this. And then you can start building up your robot. And you can see now how you can assemble a handful of components pretty quickly. If this place is on, we then lock that and couple it. Okay, great. So we've got one degree of freedom, we've got two degrees of freedom going this way. Then you can continue to carry that on, you end up building up a simple arm, very, very familiar to the manufacturing space. BMW, for example, uses these in huge scale to pick up cars. And then you keep adding up more, Tesla, all these amazing companies. Um, this enables, I guess, multiple configurations. If I want to have a system here that can rotate this way, or I want to have perhaps a steering system, a tilt system, I can do it in different varieties of configurations. All you then need is a way to control it. So we provide a mobile software called Pendant. Pendant enables you to quickly program up a series of solutions for maneuvers. It's the, I guess, control solution, the remote control, the programmer, whatever it is you want to do to visualize it. We're going to scale this to a larger size and then down to a knuckle size. Of course, the bigger ones carry more power, more torque, and the smaller ones have more precision. So we're talking about the kind of tasks that right now are being done by millions of people in China, in Taiwan, in in Mexico, in America, that are realizing that the cost of labor is becoming a burden on their ability to produce the product at the client's uh, you know, cost needs. So robots, automation, doing jobs that humans used to have, what happens to those humans now? There may well be a pace of robotics and innovation in this technology space that people can't keep up with. And so some of those workers that are not skilled enough to run a robot might have to look for some other avenues to get work. Now this is the key. If you make this robot simple enough, you make this accessible to the consumer, then any of these workers can become robot operators. So the reality is we might be putting these science fiction writers out of business by making <laughs> science fiction makers. Yeah, well, I guess at some point if you add the artificial intelligence, which is definitely an interesting space that's heating up and has been for several decades, then you reach a point where maybe the robot is better at improving itself than we are. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah.